All right, so I'm gonna be attempting to show how to repair a broken hinge on this Lenovo IdeaPad 5 using some JB Weld. Um, the exact model number of this, I can't really turn it over completely to show because the thing is broken, but um, this is a um, IdeaPad 5 uh, 15iil05, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the hinge off. So here you can see actually this side is already coming out. Um, there is adhesive underneath this whole thing, or at least there was. I actually took it out earlier to um, remove that adhesive. But basically what you do is, let me start from the side with that's already not popped up, but basically you wanna kind of pull from an edge like most hinges and you kind of want to push it in towards the center or in towards the center as you're kind of pulling the edge out. So what I do is I kind of like pull on this. I don't know if you can see. Um, and then while I'm kind of pulling it, you can see as I pull it in towards the center, you can see it actually um, comes up. Okay, we're going to work our way around the top and now I'm kind of pulling it down in this way. And same thing again, yours will have some adhesive there. So go slow you don't want to just rip it out you want to take your time work on it slowly okay so just like this okay work your way down and again i'm pushing it in towards the center while i'm kind of lifting excuse me so as you can see it's coming up there's a bunch of adhesive in here as well so again you you want to do this slowly so you want to kind of peel it up and get the adhesive out and I'm going fast because I peeled the adhesive out, but normally I'd be like going like this slowly, just working my way over, pulling it up like that. Okay. Um, anyways, once we get over there, oh, it's actually missing a plastic piece from down here. I'm going to have to see if I can find that. Um, we're going to want to also pop up the hinge back here. So this is a little, I don't know how I'm going to show this. It's going to be tricky, but uh, basically what I do is I get my fingernail in between the gap here. So you can actually see where the hinge is kind of popping it up a little. Um, let me see, maybe I'll close the screen a little if I can um, to try and show this better. Okay, so maybe, hopefully this gap is enough. So basically what I do is I get my fingernail in here. Again, you can use plastic pry tools if you want, but basically we're gonna um, pop the clips out from here. So usually you wanna pull it down towards the base here. Okay, so I'm just going like this and sliding my fingernails over. And as you can see, now this thing is completely popped forward. Okay, oh, it popped itself back in. So this is tough to do while trying to show it on camera. Um, but basically, while you're doing that, after you do that, you're kind of gonna pull from the front here, okay? You wanna pull these clips out, okay? And then once you get these clips here out and the ones underneath the uh, hinge, you can actually pull this up. So I use my fingernail in here, you can use some tool to get in the edge and then you can actually pull this frame out and there we go we have the um, screen bezel out so here you can see this blue piece is actually part of this uh, plastic part here but there's some adhesive on there as you can see sorry I know it's like not focusing but yeah so they would have adhesive all the way around you can see on the top frame there's also some adhesive there but I peeled some of it out because it was getting all wrinkled on itself and you don't want to leave that there um, that adhesive isn't really necessary for holding the frame together, so don't worry about it too much. Um, and here you can see the broken um, screen part here. So this is going to be somewhat of a pain to repair. Um, underneath the hinge, there's actually this uh, pull tab here. So if the screen needs to be removed, um, this kind of pull tab here is going to need to be you ha it's a stretch release adhesive so you have to kind of pull it straight going along with the screen so usually I pull it through the edge down here and then I have to just keep pulling it straight down um, so if you need to replace the screen keep that in mind this thing is pretty difficult to remove I don't know if I can have this on top instead um, because if it's underneath and I epoxy this down then we're not going to be able to get that out later so what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm basically putting force with my hand on the back to push it against the hinge, and I'm gonna roll the hinge up slightly. Okay, so that way if I pull it back, you can see it's forming a gap there. Okay, so let me actually zoom in a bit. So this model is somewhat of a pain to work on. Um, then you got this down here where the screen cable's kind of going underneath. 
we need to pull a little bit of that out so we can get to the screw back here. You can actually see the screw actually even scraped this plastic and exposed part of the LCD board. So you want to be careful with that. All right. So that's why when the hinge is broken, you don't want to keep opening and closing it because then you can destroy your screen. All right. So we're going to try and get this um, LCD cable slightly out here. So I'm just pushing it down to get it around this uh, plastic piece that's protruding. Okay, and there we go. Now you can see we have a little bit more room to work because I can pull this cable forward, but you don't want to yank it out because this, I think, is going to the uh, camera, and then the LCD cable is right here, okay? So anyways, we're going to now try and remove these screws from here. I'm going to use some thin needle nose pliers, okay, so these, and then we're going to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver, I think is what I need. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab, we're grabbing the brass piece behind the screw, and then while we're holding it, we're going to just undo this screw. Okay, now that we got that out, we'll set that aside. I might have to do this in parts. I forgot to empty the trash on my phone, and I'm running out of space. I can only record for a few more minutes. So let me go ahead and try and get this one out. Okay, same thing, holding that, and then twist the screw. Okay, there we go. All right, and then we'll get the last screw here. This one can be a little tough because the board there, so I have to kind of push the screen slightly back so I have more room there. And we'll grab that, and hopefully we can reach this, the cable somewhat in the way, so I have to go underneath the cable. All right, and let's go ahead and undo this screw. Okay, can't go from the top because if I go from the top, it's just going to um, damage that cable. So there we go, we got that screw out. Okay, now I'm going to move the screen back slightly again to get this brass piece out, and there we go. Um, if there's any loose debris here, you want to remove that. I use this hand air blower to do that. Um, you can also brush it with a toothbrush to clean it up a bit. Um, but yeah, so there we go. We cleaned that out, um, and then we should be able to start with the um, JB Weld. But let me go ahead. Actually, I'm going to brush it a little because I do see like some of it looks loose so i'm gonna try and hold this out of the way and just kind of brush it if i can okay i do see some like loose pieces of plastic there so i'm going to use the needle nose pliers to try and get it out okay oh it just moved around where'd it go so actually the plastic under here is also kind of wobbly and loose it doesn't hold very tight okay so let's blow that debris out there we go um, and I might also have to do the other side. Um, the other side's not really broken, but uh, it's it's kind of loose. So let me see. Maybe I can just tighten the screw and it will help. Yeah. So I'm going to um, add some uh, red thread locker to these screws and then tighten them up a bit because they are coming a little loose. And usually when they come loose, that's when they break a lot easier. So I'm going to use something to hold up the screen here right now. Okay. I'm going to just use some red thread locker here. And you want to put very little because the red thread locker, um, it can like make plastic a little more brittle. So you want to be careful. You don't want to put too much. I think actually all the thread lockers will do that. But yeah, you only want to put a little. Okay. I don't know if you can see. Oops, sorry. But here you can see I just put a tiny bit, not even like a full drop all the way around, just a little. And then we're just going to tighten that screw in. And I'm going to do this with all three screws. Um, since I'm not putting glue on here, I'm not going to take that uh, adhesive tab underneath out. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and put some more of this on there. There we go. Again, just a very tiny bit. Okay. Put that in. Okay, and we'll get these screws all in. Okay, 
So, there we go. We got those three screws nice and tight. The other screws we're not going to be replacing. We're actually going to be using JB Weld to hold that in place. Um, I'm getting a phone call now and my phone is running out of um, room to record, so I'll be back in a bit. Alright, so I have another customer coming soon, so I'm going to probably have to pause the video again in a bit. But um, anyways, the hard part with this is basically getting this to stay lined up and then completely set. So, um, as you can see, luckily on this one, you can see these two plastic protruding pieces here. Um, they actually stay in place. So, when I close this, it's going to actually keep itself lined up. Um, but I am going to have to put something to kind of smush this together. I'm going to use some saran wrap to kind of put on top just to keep it from from the epoxy from sticking to the bezel um, and then again I'm gonna have to most likely pull this uh, piece forward actually I can probably leave it like that and then if I ever need to pull it out I'll have to use some special tools to do it um, but yeah so let me see how can I will this be able to stay forward I don't know <laughs> so I don't know if this um, this piece might be too thick to actually stay up here. Um, if I leave this up here, the bezel might not close properly. So I might have to find a way, maybe I can kind of tuck it like that at an angle. It looks like that works. So I can probably just tuck it in at an angle like that and then see about um, filling the rest of the parts with epoxy. Um, again, the hard part with the epoxy, I'm going to have to put something to block this area here. Maybe I'll use some tape just to put over the screen and the bezel and everything to prevent it from filling into those gaps because you don't want the epoxy to kind of get in there. So I'm going to see about putting some tape in here, here, and here, and then just maybe I'll just wrap it over the top and that should hopefully prevent it from getting glued into place. So let's go ahead and get a little tape for that. Let's see, do I have some not as sticky tape? Okay, we'll use this here. So I'm gonna use this tape and some scissors. We're just gonna cut this up here, okay? Again, we don't really need much, so I'm gonna cut it to be about the bezel length because we're not going to put epoxy up there so then what we're going to do we're going to basically get it behind where the screw is so we'll cut it like this okay so now what i'll do is i'll get this into here hopefully you guys can actually see so i'm just trying to get this into the base here okay oh that's actually too long so let me cut off the little triangle cut edge areas Okay, so I'm going to get this in here. Okay, just like that. So now I have tape kind of blocking it. And we're just going to do that on all three sides if we can. Alright. Get rid of that junk. Alright. Uh-oh, my other customer's here. So I'm going to have to be quicker with this, and then I'm going to have to pause and come back. All right, so we're going to get all this old adhesive out. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right, so I got those little pieces here. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here um, where the screw is going to go, or not the screw, but where the screw used to go. Okay, um, let me use this little plastic piece and clean up this area a little bit. Okay, how am I going to get that in there? Let's see, we'll put this at an angle like that. It's a little tough to get it over there. Um, I don't know if I have to get this side as well, the one that's on the side of this because it might flow into there, so I have to be careful. All right, so we'll get that. We'll stick that piece of tape there. Yeah, I might have to put a little bit down there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna cut another piece here a bit. Uh oh, my customer here might 
might be rushing me soon. Okay, so we're going to put this here. And we're just going to push that down there. Okay, just like that. Roll that over. Alright, there you go. And then this piece, I know my head's probably going to be getting in the way. I don't know if it's already been doing that the whole time, but it's difficult to do this. So, oh, I didn't want that to stick there. So I've got to peel that back up. Okay, let's see if I can hold it with this piece to guide it. This one's tricky. I don't know how I'm going to get it there. Okay, I think that work okay okay so I'm just covering this up so that way the epoxy won't get onto it try to shove that excess in there okay so there we go and yeah so I have my customer here I'm gonna go um, get their computer and then we'll see if they're planning to wait while I work on it If not, then I'll come back and do this one right away. All right. See you guys in a bit All right, I'm back. So we're going to go ahead and mix up some JB weld and then go ahead and um, Get started with repairing this. All right, so let me grab the JB weld here Okay <clears throat> All right, so let's see here. Oh, and I forgot to mention we have this one piece on the other side too. Um, but basically that piece comes out just by kind of like pulling on it. As you can see, if I pulled on it, it will just pop out. I don't want it to come out, so I'm gonna push it back in. All right, so anyways, oops, I clicked that in all the way. All right, so let's go ahead and mix up some JB Weld here. Um, we shouldn't need too much. Maybe I should zoom out so you can see this. I'm, I don't want to work on this or work on the JB Weld um, while on top of the computer because it might fall inside. So, okay. We have three pieces <clears throat> that need to get filled or three screws. Right, comes as two parts like this. Right now, it's actually really cold today. Um, I'm working on this, finishing this up right now really late at night. So, um the JB weld is probably going to be pretty thick, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. So it's usually a little bit difficult to kind of judge how much you need. So um, if you're not sure, just make a bit more than, than you think you need. It's better to have more than not enough. And then later you're going to have to worry about um, making more. So... This is a pretty good amount for this because there's only three spots. So I think this should be already like way more than enough. We'll see. And this also this one, there's not much uh, filling I need to do. It's more just to replace the screw in. So I need some paper here so I can clean this off. Okay, because I don't want this stuff to get stuck in there. All right, switch over to this one. And we're gonna try and get about equal parts. I'm using a different side of this thing, just in case you're wondering. You don't wanna mix the parts while getting it out of the container because otherwise it will basically just solidify the glue in the thing or the epoxy. All right, so I think that's about equal. All right, close that up, put that aside. All right, and this stuff has to set for about 15 hours, so keep that in mind. I was actually supposed to work on this like way um, earlier. Um, I stopped for a bit and then I ended up stopping too long. I had other customers come and other stuff going on. But anyways, we're just gonna stir this all up. 
I like using this plastic stuff because normally it would just go into the garbage or recyclables, but um, now I can use it for this. And you can kind of look at the bottom and see if it's stirred properly. You can see you can actually um, that it's not stirred completely. Okay. Um, this stuff actually solidifies better in warmer temperatures, so I'll see. If I might have to bring this into a warmer area because uh, right now my work area is like in the garage so okay so let's go ahead and get this all stirred together okay sorry if I'm going out of camera all right now you can see most of it's there's still a little bit more areas that didn't stir properly okay there we go Let's go ahead and grab this. I think I made way too much. Move some stuff out of the way. Okay. So what we're gonna do is basically fill up the screw mount or screw hole areas here. Okay. Yeah, I made way too much. Well, all right. So I'm gonna put some in the screw hole area. Then I'm also gonna put it on the back of this metal piece here. Okay. And we kind of want it to come all the way through. We're going to do that with all three spots. Okay. It's a little difficult to see here what I'm doing. Again, I did wrap the area around with tape to prevent it from sticking to the screen. Because you don't want it to just stick all onto the screen. Otherwise, if you need to replace the screen in the future, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Okay. So... Fill up this gap here. Okay, and again, right now it's cold, so it's kind of tough to get this stuff to um, flow into where I need it to go. All right, we're sticking it on the back of the hinge again, and you actually want it to come through slightly. Okay, put more on this side. Okay, this bottom one's going to be tricky because this wire is in the way. Um, if you want to make it easier, um, you can actually um, take the entire screen out of here. But, uh, I'm going to try and do it this way. So get that in through there. Good. And then you get some down there. Might have to get my head in the way because I can't see what's going on down here. Okay, so basically we're filling the gap where the screw mount used to be and then putting it on the back of the hinge so that way when we pull this back up together. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up. Oh, I do have to pull that um, adhesive thing out of the way again. So I don't want this in there. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this flip tab out of the way or the stretch adhesive tab out of the way. I'm gonna fold that up. Bring this back over. Move some stuff out of the way. Okay, so let me see, how am I going to show this here? Um, let me zoom out a bit because it's too close now. I don't have enough room on my desk to show this, I think. Okay, so now I'm just kind of trying to line this back up with those little tabs that stick out. Alright, good. Alright, the tricky part now is to get everything back together while it's staying up like this. So here you can see, um, or hopefully you can see, let me rotate this the other way so you can see better. Okay, so let's zoom in. Here you can see the epoxy is actually pushing through now, um, through these metal parts here. So we're going to kind of flatten that out a bit. 
Turn that out a bit. It's difficult to work on this one. I can't really see because the camera's not in a good spot for me to be able to work on it and see what I'm doing. Let me see if I can rotate this the other way. I have to move other stuff out of the way. Okay, let me spin this around and hopefully I won't get the epoxy on it. Okay. So you can kind of see it this way. Alright, so basically we want to keep this up this way. So I'm going to see if I can kind of close the hinge a bit more so it holds itself. It's Now the computer's holding itself up. Um, Alright, so that looks good. I'm going to put a little bit more just to make sure it holds stronger. Okay. Put some out slightly over the edge over here. Okay. Since we put that tape, I'm going to kind of go over the tape a little bit. If anything, we could always peel that tape up. Okay. And we can do somewhat the same thing over here, and a little bit down here. Okay. Now, the, now to get this to fit, so again, I'm going to shove this down here at an angle. Okay. And this thing, again, it has multiple pieces to it. So we have this plastic piece that's going to go here. Um, goes that way and then we have the whole hinge assembly so again um, we're going to use some saran wrap or this cling wrap plastic film because it's so thin um, we're going to cover those screw mounts that we put the epoxy into and then that way when we put the plastic pieces on top it won't stick to it all right so this is kind of a trick all right so let's go ahead and cut this this model actually has a design flaw because I've actually worked on multiple of these models with broken hinges. Um, they use different model names, but basically the same exact design. Okay, so now we got this. And, oh, I think I cut it too big, so we're going to cut it like this. Oh. The only thing with uh, using this cling wrap stuff is it, it clings to the scissors. That's why it's called cling wrap, of course. Okay, so now we got this. Try and keep it flat. Okay, and it stops sticking to me. There's too much static. Static, static. Okay, so we're gonna try and get this to stay flat if we can. Stop flopping on yourself, please. Okay. Well, I guess since it's sticking to me, I'll do it that way. Okay, hold it there. Flip that over, and there we go. Okay, we'll cut another piece for the other side. And then do the same thing. If it flips around too much on you and you can't get it, um, you can actually fold it over and make it double layered. So that way it's thicker and then it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay. Alright, so we'll stick that over there. Good. Make sure that goes into that spot. Okay. What I do with my paper? I need to clean my hands. Okay. Put epoxy one in my fingernails so I'm gonna have permanently dirty looking fingernails that people keep complaining about but I use them for my videos to work on computers so <laughs> all right anyways so we got all of that covered with the plastic wrap okay so we're gonna do now we got to get this piece under there uh, hopefully I can get it underneath with it angled like that okay it looks like not I'm probably gonna have to hold this down and tilt it Tilt the whole screen back. Uh, shoot. Okay, kind of. I don't know if I can get that in there. Nope, I'm going to have to use the screwdriver or something to hold that in place. Um, 
Let me try it with this plastic tool. It might work. worked all right so make sure this stuff all stays in place um, hope that worked let's get that in okay it's kind of in place but not really come on get in there we go I need to snap that back down oops sorry that so this piece I had to slide back under there get that all locked into place good all right make sure this is there I'm gonna now well basically what I'm doing I don't know if you can see I'm pulling down on the keyboard while I'm kind of twisting it forward to keep the hinge pressed in place okay so that way I can make sure it goes in properly good all right, that's a, that's a pretty big pain to work on. All right, now we can go ahead and, oh shoot, we do have to leave the hinge more open. Oh, what have I done? Okay, now I have to <laughs> use something to hold that down again. It's just, this is such an annoyance to work on, but this design, okay. So I'm going to have to hold this down while I pull the whole thing back. Oh, it's so difficult. Hold this down. And the reason we have to do that is because this little hinge piece needs to go over the other things. Okay, so we're going to get that over the hinges we can. Do I have to open it even more? I think I have to open it like almost all the way. I hate this design. Okay. Now it's opened almost all the way. Can we get this in here? Get that back over that. It's hard to do this because I have it upside down. Mm -hmm. I'll stand it up, but I have to keep holding on the back so that this doesn't come out. And let's go ahead and get this in place. Oh, that's the one other thing I almost forgot. Because we took this out, make sure to push this cable back in there, of course. Did I put saran wrap down there? Uh-oh. I don't think I put saran wrap down there. Um... That's not good. This is going to be bad. How am I going to get the shrimp wrap down there? Okay. Um, I'm going to lean this up against something so I don't have to worry about folding it again. Give me a second. Let me get another piece of shrimp wrap and just shove it down there. Okay, so I got another piece of shrimp wrap and I'm going to have to shove it into there. I do have to pull that wire back out. go um, let's actually put a bit more epoxy down there as well Maybe a little bit I gotta like twist my arms all over the place now to do this okay we'll get some more into there I'll try and get some in the corner edge as well. So down in this little piece here. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Difficult part is getting this ram wrap in there. Let's see if I can just push that down there using this. Okay. 
Okay, that's probably good. All right, and we'll get this wire over back into its slot. And that should hold the SRAM wrap into place too. Um, shoot, okay. I don't know how I'm going to do this because this one is, yeah, it's overflowing a bit. So this ceram wrap needs to kind of go over. Hmm. Oh, people are lighting New Year's firecrackers now. I need to use a uh, little needle nose pliers, maybe. Here, <laughs> fire alarms going off. I mean, car alarms going off. Okay, so now I pulled it through to the bottom. The only problem is there's some <laughs> JB weld on the SRAM wrap. Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll push this into place. It's at midnight now. Everybody's lighting their firecrackers. Okay. Let's go ahead now and get this into place. Okay. Just get that in. And then, I can't see, but we're basically just going to snap everything back in now. So just work your way all around. Okay, work your way all around, snap all of that back in, alright, this is the tricky part, what am I, can't see down here, there we go, snap that in, tilt this back, and we're just going to snap all this, wow, so many firecrackers going off right now, I don't know if you guys can even hear them, but, Right, push this all back in as well, the blue part. Make sure it's all snapped in, and I think we're good. All right, and now to make sure it holds well, what I'm gonna do is I'm pushing down on the this piece while I'm rotating it, okay? Now it's standing up, right? Okay, and that actually looks good, so. We could probably leave it standing upright like that, or if you want, you can try and close it, but you want to be very careful, make sure nothing pops out. Make sure all these um, clips back here are in. All right, those look good. All right, so I think I'm going to close it so that way, just in case, nothing can knock it over. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a lot of downward pressure on the keyboard while I rotate it. Again, this hinge design is pretty bad, so we got to kind of make sure that while we're closing it we're also pushing down to keep pressure to keep the hinge in the right spot and there we go make sure everything is lined up here let's zoom in oops sorry about that all right make sure everything's lined up right looks good make sure the hinges on both sides look good we're gonna let this sit overnight. Again, it takes about 15 hours to completely set, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helps some of you guys. I know this is kind of a difficult thing to repair. So yeah, but anyways, again, hopefully it helped. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making video these videos for a living. And that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Alright, let's drop this spike.